Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. I'm Bevan Clare. I am the program director of the Masters of Science in Clinical Herbal Medicine. And uh, tonight we're going to be chatting about becoming a clinical herbalist, um, the training and the career options for becoming a clinical herbalist at MUIH. So I have been at MUIH since the early 2000s, um, and I've you know watched the program grow and change over the years and produce so many fantastic, successful clinicians. Um, I'm really excited to share some of the insights that I've found with working with, with clinicians um, that have been very successful and uh, a little bit about how the program you know, really enables you and, and um, uh, sets you up for success. So without further ado, <laughs> let's get going on this. So um, so that's me, which is a little awkward. I have like, the webcam and then like a big giant of my face, but um, I am, I'm a clinical herbalist and a nutritionist. I've been an herbalist my whole um, life, basically. And not when I was a small child, but I was always like making potions in the sandbox, even when I was a little kid and exploring the woods and so on. And um my background, I spent a lot of time working with uh, plants and people in different parts of the world, particularly in Southeast Asia, in some of my formative, um, you could say late teen or um, young adult years. And that led me to pursue a master's in infectious disease. I was really interested in how plants work in um, those critical care situations. Um, and then I uh, joined MUIH in um, 2004. So it's been great to, uh, to be part of training clinicians. And I'm really passionate about the herbalists as much as I am about the herbs. So I wanted to start just by, you know, mentioning a little bit about the type of clinical herbalists that there are, because there are a lot of different types of clinical herbalists. And one of the core premises as of the program is that, you know, it's not that there's one type that's better than the others, that this is not a hierarchy that you're looking at here. This is just like a spectrum of different types of herbalism. So, you know, herbalism really at its best is something that everyone learns from their grandparents and their community and uses in their homes with their families. Uh, you know, if, if we were all able to do that, it would be so much better. Um, the community herbalists and area herbalists in each region are so important to be able to provide support and wellness um, and those using a traditional model. Now, MUIH's clinicians fall somewhere around here. And the idea is that um, while people may have their own um, identity uh, with traditional or cultural herbalism, the program actually trains you to respect and appreciate tradition and culture, um, but to root your practice deeply also in biomedical and, and evidence-informed herbalism. So to integrate into the primary healthcare system and to be um, a part of that. So that's one of the reasons why this is a master's degree that you um, but in the end, we'll be able to, you know, chat with primary care providers to be part of a care team and um, to serve people in that way, which is really important. So what is an herbalist? You know, that's a question I think that people often are curious about, you know, what is an herbalist? Um, and there's, because there's a lot of different types of herbalists and uh, tons of different types of herbalists. In fact, you know, every country and every culture has herbalists um, and always has for all of time. So that's, I think, really an interesting thing. So you can imagine with that type of diversity of herbalism, of course, it's really hard to peg us down. But in a way, herbalists tend to work with people to support optimal wellness. Um, we support the body by supporting all these different systems and processes. So what in the United States, one of the things that herbalists don't do unless they are primary care providers is we don't um, treat disease. So this is a, a bit of a nuance, but also um, really very true to the heart of how herbalism is practiced, where, you know, we support and help to restore optimal wellness, not necessarily to like rid the body of disease. It's about strengthening and nourishing and supporting. Um, so we see people with a lot of serious health conditions and we're able to um, optimize their wellness and their well-being on, on a kind of biopsychosocial 
scale, um, which is really important. So herbalists tend to um, use herbal medicines and nature. And that might mean they have like a huge apothecary from all over the place. So that might mean they only use what's growing locally um, outside their door. And uh, we, you know, contemporary clinical herbalists tend to center ethics and inclusivity in their practice. Um, at least here in the United States, that's a really common element of, um, of a lot of herbalists lives. And we do play roles in high healthcare. So the idea is that like we're in there, we're integrated into the healthcare system, um, that it's not an alternative or apart from like, we're trying to provide the best quality of care, which happens when people get the best quality of care that they need and their providers communicate with one another. So that's one of our big goals in the program. So what does it look like to be trained as a clinical herbalist and in the clinical herbalism program? Um, the logistics and delivery. So the program is six trimesters long. Each trimester is 14 weeks. So it can be com completed in two years. And the first two trimesters are this post-baccalaureate certificate in uh, herbal studies. So people can start right with that post-baccalaureate certificate in herbal studies and see how online learning works for them, and so on. Other, those are bigger courses. There's a lot more people in them. When you get into, after the first two trimesters, you get into the program that the courses that are a core part of the master's degree. So you're in a cohort model. Um, the cohort model is really wonderful because it has, um, the, the cohort model um, allows you to go through the whole experience with your core group of peers. So it's not like every course you take, you'll have different people in it. Uh, you actually start with a group of people and you move through with it. So by the end, you know, you have these new, really close friends that you can, you know, keep for for all time, um, but they help support you as you go through your career choices and uh, and everything that you are um, that you're doing. So you know it's pretty wonderful to, um, to to see those cohorts become very tight and bonded as they go through the program. Um, so the, the program is delivered asynchronously. So what does that mean? It means that you're working very closely with your peers and your faculty, but you're not necessarily all online at exactly the same time. So um, so like there might be a whole bunch of things that are all due on Wednesday. So between Sunday and Wednesday, you and your peers are all working on these things. You might be um, conversing back and forth in uh, discussion forums or in chats. You can use a little bit of asynchronous video, um, all of that. It doesn't mean that you're sitting there watching tons of videos or something like that. That's not how these usually work. It's often you going out, doing a lot of research, sharing with peers, commenting, um, exploring. So you have different due dates all the time, but you can work when you want or when it works for you. And we do have some occasional live things um, socially and also academically, but we try to keep those fairly limited just because we know that uh, most people who do these programs do have busy lives and it's hard to do that. So the clinical herbal medicine program is 100% online um, with opportunities to come to campus or to come to different gatherings or things like that. Like we always meet up at the American Herbalist Guild Symposium every year. We just had that a few weeks ago in Bethesda and, um, and we had a fantastic gathering of about 65, um, 70 uh, alumni and students there. And uh, so, so that's you know, the program can be completed, though, from anywhere in the um, world that you are able to be online with a few small exceptions for certain states that um, that don't allow certain types of online learning. So the so that's a little bit how it's delivered. Now, I mentioned the course sizes and you start those courses earlier on um, with these larger groups. So the post-baccalaureate certificate in herbal studies, you're in there with this bigger group. Um, you move into courses after that is done where you have both the herbal product design and development program and the um, clinical program together. And then as you get a little bit further on, you move just into the clinical courses. So then you have really nice, like tight cohorts. I mean, a lot of times there's like a dozen people or so in that. So you work really closely together. I get to know you really well. The other faculty get to know you really well. And um, that makes everything very meaningful and pretty awesome. So there are a lot of fundamental courses that you start with to make sure you have that kind of core um, 
that that core foundation of herbalism. And the first one you do is actually fundamentals of herbal medicine. And that really looks at herbalism from a lot of different perspectives, understanding that herbalism is a cultural art and science, um, that it exists all around the world and how to appreciate and um, be aware and understand a little bit about the traditional cultural herbalism that is present. Um, although we don't teach people how to, to do those practices because they are cultural practices within different cultures. But a lot of students come because they have that connection and the program allows them to explore that more deeply. You have physiology, which helps you to understand the body in health. And it's a really unique and fantastic course. Instead of always looking at diseases, this is much more around health. You learn how to um, read statistics, how to look at research um, and research literacy. And this is so key as you are, you know, you're getting a master's degree. So you're writing papers, you're, um, you know, you're looking at a lot of these elements. And you look at um, research and scholarship also, trying to make sure that, um, that what you're doing, you know, befits a master's degree with the um, science and your ability to understand and communicate using a lot of those concepts. Materia Medica is the plants that we use for medicine. And you have two, three credit courses of Materia Medica where you learn about all different herbs. Um, you know, there's so many different herbal medicines to learn about, but you learn about a whole bunch of them and you're able to um, understand how to use them, how to prepare them, all of those pieces. And along the lines of preparing, you also have the herbal pharmacy course where you, you, you learn to evaluate products out there, but you actually make a lot of things and that's really fun. So in a course like that and in Materia Medica, you get an herb kit where you get all different kinds of herbs and products at your home. So then you can actually make things. You can make like creams and oils and tinctures and you learn how to make all those things. Even if you don't necessarily want to sell them in your practice or make them for people in your practice, it gives you the skills to be able to understand how to do that and how that all works. Um, you also learn a lot about how plants work in clinical practice. Um, the, you know, the, the medicine making piece is one thing, but also getting people to be able to take those medic medicines. It can be a little tricky at times, especially because not all herbs taste delicious. And so we look a lot at that. We also look at the pharmacology and phytochemistry of these plants, um, really looking at what makes these plants these plants, how we can understand them with our senses. And I think that's one of those amazing things. I mean, I, I spend a lot of time traveling in the world and I can walk up to a medicinal plant in a market anywhere that I've never seen before. And by smelling it and looking at it, possibly tasting it, I can give you a really good guess of what it's used for. And that is because plant chemistry, um, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of things you can identify um, with your senses and with taste. So we learn a lot about that. We also look at history and culture with plants. You know, herbal medicine has been used for millennia. So you need to understand the context and how we use these plants and what is so wonderful about them and how we've under, you know, changed our understanding of them over time. Um, and just all of those practical aspects of, of the clinical application of herbal medicine in clinical practice. You learn lots about clinical therapeutics and safety. In fact, you start with a safety course in the beginning of the program, and um, that safety course really helps you to understand the gray area that is herbal safety. And this is one of the most important things about doing this, that, that you know, there's a lot of primary care providers or pharmacists who are really interested in using more herbal medicine in their practice um, and using more herbal medicine out there in the world that they're, what they're doing, but they don't... Um, but they don't feel like they uh, know how to navigate the safety because it's just too tricky and they need professionals to be able to do that. So that's one of the great things that you can do um, as a graduate of the program is um, consult and advise around safety. You also learn a lot about like clinical theory and how herbalists look at people, they look at health, they look at disease, how we do our assessments, how we do our intakes, how we um, come up with formulations and things like that. And we have a really cool 
cool course called Applied Therapeutics, where we have, uh, I think there's six or seven faculty in it. And every week, faculty bring in a different case study, and you come up with, um, you do some some biomedical research on what the case, uh, you know, some aspects of the case. You write formulas, um, you, you critique and support your peers with their formulas. And uh, it's just really pretty fun to take a look at, at that course. Um, you also have applied clinical experiences. So the applied clinical experiences are um, your clinic and you actually do a residency clinic using our natural care center, um, using a telehealth model. So you're actually in there like in an official official sort of telehealth and that people you can see your clients. So uh, you have this practice for two trimesters and you work one-on-one -on -one with your supervisors and with your peers. Your peers actually will observe you while you're seeing clients and give you feedback. And then you'll also be um, observing, you, you'll also be talking with your supervisor and getting a lot of feedback on how you work with people at those roundtable sessions. Um, we also train you how to do group facilitation where you work with a group around certain types of health aspects, how to support people's health uh, using a group model, which can be really affordable and accessible for a lot of people. There is case study writing that you learn how to do. So you can write for medical journals and um, send that information out there. And um, and there's just a lot of different types of ways that we, we learn about this. There's the, one of the last courses in the program helps you to learn about how to be a, a successful clinician around many of the different things that clinicians end up doing, like teaching at universities or consulting or doing a lot of writing, uh, working in nonprofits, things like that. So... That gives you a little bit of an idea about the actual um, program and how it's structured. Um, you know, you can, if you take a look at our website, you can find all sorts of information on um, the different courses, the descriptions of the courses, what that's like. But, you know, the idea for us is that we make this as um, practical and uh, as um, career applied as possible. So, you know, we have a we spend a huge amount of energy in making sure that you are ready for success when you graduate. We we need to um, make sure that you know you're launched in the right way. So we try to make the program really, really practical um, and so that it works well for everyone. So I wanted to talk a little bit about where our clinicians find success. Um, you know, clinical practice is really the obvious one, right? I mean, people love to practice clinically, and that can be very, uh, you know, just wonderful work where you can have a standalone practice where you're just seeing clients a few days a week, uh, but you can also integrate into a conventional medical practice. A lot of times there are primary care providers. In fact, I just heard from somebody today, a primary care provider who wants to get an herbalist in their practice. And so there's a lot of opportunities like that. You can also add it to another skill set. We have a lot Lot of healthcare providers who come into the program, whether they're nurse practitioners or um, physicians or, um, you know, physician's assistants, there's, you know, health, there's social workers, there's therapists, there's all sorts of different kinds of people who come in and want to bring this career into what they're already doing, which works really, really well. So here's an example, Rebecca Snow. Rebecca Snow is an herbalist and a nutritionist, and you know she has an incredibly busy practice. I, I was referring somebody there recently, and you know there's like a three month waiting list to get in to see Rebecca. So um, she works online and does a lot of nutrition as well as a lot of herbal medicine, and kind of blends the two of them together. So she also does some mentorship and teaching as well. Um, clinical case consulting is another thing that people do. I know uh, I was this talking with Carrie Connell, who does a lot of um, case consulting where other providers are seeing people for things, and then she's helping them to understand their um, therapeutic areas, particularly in cancer care, things like that. 
Uh, you can also do a lot of speaking and consulting in your area of expertise. So one of the things when, uh, you know, one of the traits that people have that succeed really well with herbalism is that they have an area of focus. So this doesn't mean you really have to uh, exclude other things. It just means it's about focusing on some things that you feel like you can do especially well. So um, an area of focus can be anything from um, a particular type of health condition, like it could be something like, um, some, I remember somebody did like, um, um, uh, <laughs> well, my brain is totally blanking out on this, uh, like incontinence, I remember, or somebody worked with glaucoma, um, supporting people with glaucoma, where it could be um, different types of um, stages in health, like menopause, or it could be um, gender transitions or all sorts of different kinds of things that you could work with somebody on. Um, and they're able to, because herbal clinical herbalists, academic clinical herbalists are a pretty small group of specialized individuals, you can um, learn about some of these things and then go out there in the world and um, be an expert in them because there's not that many other people who are specializing in them. So here's a specialist. This is uh, Melissa Cole has Luna Lactation and Wellness, really busy, fantastic um, lactation consulting practice where she does a ton of herbal medicine and she is located in Portland, Oregon. Um, I, you know, I got to have the pleasure to visit Melissa and see her practice. And I was really um, totally impressed with that. So, you know, she's been a lactation consultant for a while, but now she's an herbalist lactation consultant and her practice is booming. Um, here is Monica McCollin. Monica is um, a, a, an herbalist and does all sorts of different fantastic things and lives in Barcelona now. Um, you know, she's, she's just wonderful and really has, uh, you know, a unique contribution to what she's offering to the world in her clinical methods. Uh, Charlotte Keichel is an author um, and also a clinician that works a lot with food and um, herbalism as well. And so this is, you know, Charlotte's been a wonderful model in what she's doing with, um, with herbalism and nutrition overall. Um, formulators is a really interesting place. In fact, some of the, I think most of the biggest um, fantastic herb companies out there have MUIH alumni working there sometimes as their lead formulas their lead formulator, sorry. So mo many clinicians hire experienced clinician companies, hire experienced clinicians as formulators so they can um, have that experience when they put together products. So there's a lot of, you know, unique clinical perspective when you are a practitioner. So if you're interested in like making a product line or formulating products, the clinical program is a great way to do that because you learn all sorts of formulation. You learn all sorts of practical things in this way. Um, Susan Hirsch is the formulation manager at Gaia Herbs. She's just fantastic. And she, you know, when you buy those wonderful Gaia Herb formulas, a lot of those are her babies. And uh, she came from, um, from MUIH. Also, uh, Chris Webb is at um, New Chapter and Innate, another big, really wonderful herb company and doing some just fantastic things out there with herbalism. Another place where you see a lot of success is in the not-for-profit world. Uh, there's a lot of value-driven herbalists um, that really believe in their mission. And when you have a master's degree, you're really eligible to apply for a lot of those academic grants and things like that out there. So you see this happening for a lot of our alumni. Um, here is um, Karen Henderson. Karen is runs the Veterans Resiliency Holistic Clinic, also has a chapter of Herbalists Without Borders, and works a lot with um, the VA and brings herbalism to veterans, which is wonderful. Um, Mimi Hernandez is the Executive Director of the American Herbalist Guild, which is our body of herbal practitioners and has just done a wonderful job with this. 
There's also a lot of writers and teachers. So many, you know, a lot of times like pharmacy schools or otherwise are looking for clinicians. Um, they're looking for academics who are who are well-versed in herbalism to come and teach at um, in their programs, whether they're medical schools or pharmacy schools or otherwise. Um, they, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for speaking, for writing, both in popular me herbal medicine literature, as well as um, more like therapeutic journaly kind of things. And so lots of opportunities if you like to write, you also learn a lot about writing in the program because you do a lot of writing in the program. Um, here's Ruby Daniels. Ruby is, a, I believe, a fourth generation um, Afro-Latin herbalist and for, for a forest farmer um, who lives in West Virginia. And because of getting this uh, degree, Ruby works with the Smithsonian um, to help better understand you know, her tradition and culture uh, and does some fantastic things with, with the Smithsonian. Larkin Bunce started the Vermont Center for Integrative Herbalism, which has actually integrated with Goddard College as well, and uh, done some pretty fantastic things around herbal medicine and has this busy three-year clinical program as well. So that's been very successful. Um, and the Herbal Academy, here's Io Negosi. Um, they work for the Herbal Academy, um, do a lot of the a lot of educational programs and different information. Um, I was also involved in a number of grassroots programs in Southern Maryland and all sorts of other fantastic things out there. So, you know, you get a little sample of some of our alumni, some of what they're doing. You heard about the program and um, how we go through the program, you know, what the, the transitions are, how, um, how all of that works. And, um, and you know, the, I think one of the most central pieces is creating this like professional life that's aligned with your core values. You know, figuring out what is really meaningful for you and um, and making sure you do that. So that's one of the things you have in common with other people in the program is that you come because this work means something to you, and um, and and you know, and that is how you know how we kind of walk through the world as herbalists is making sure that we can make a good living um, and be successful but we're doing what we love that the world needs and that's the right thing to do so uh, it's it's a pretty awesome career to be part of a few resources you can find in the muih main page um, the masters in clinical herbal medicine you can find right on the website, lots of details, details about like the tuition and financial aid and blah, blah, blah. Um, the American Herbalist Guild is also a place where you can learn about clinical herbalism. There's a big MUIH community as part of that. And if you have any questions, you can email me or um, in the admissions department. You can see both of those email addresses right here. And um, so feel free to reach out and contact us. Um, you know, we really, we really want to make sure that that if you choose to go to this program, it is the right choice. It's a big choice. It's two years of your life. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy and focus. So, you know, if you're going to do it, we want you to be ready and you want to be ready. And we want to make sure that this is the right program for you. So, um, so, you know, let us know how we can help and um, the admissions counselors are great at answering your questions. Um, and if you need anything, you know, reach out. So thank you so much for attending the webinar and um, for being here. And it was such a pleasure and have a great evening.